Uh, you know, just after we finished taping last week, we learned of the death of a frontline health care worker, a gay nurse manager, 48 years old, named Caius Jordan Kelly of the coronavirus. He died on Tuesday. And his colleagues are saying uh, the hospital killed him, Mount Sinai. They killed him. Uh, not enough uh, protective equipment. Some of the people in the hospital were wearing garbage bags to, instead of gowns because that's all that they could get. They lack essential equipment. But I want to. I just want to say, you know, when I saw him pop up as the as the person who died, I had just met him five weeks beforehand. I was uh, working for New Alternatives for homeless LGBT youth, and I don't do a lot of this. But the executive director said, "Can anybody go over to Mount Sinai and help out one of our kids? Uh, he's in terrible pain. He's not getting help." Uh, would you go over there and advocate for him and exert your white privilege? You know, I was an African-American kid. So I, I went over there. I was there for five hours. I met a lot of nice people who wouldn't do anything for this kid who couldn't even take a sip of water. He was in such agony. And then five hours later, I don't want to start crying again. Caius Kelly shows up. I'm sorry. You know, just trying to control myself. He shows up very calm. The kid is out of control. He wants to kill himself. Caius just gets him the pain medication, calms him down, and resolves the situation. I mean, I, I so he was somebody I was never going to forget anyone, anyway, and now he's gone. I, I just have to say, you know, I don't know what happened. I wasn't there, but I also read a report that he may not have uh, taken the care to use the protection that was available to him. And apparently had an underlying condition and, and all, but you know, look, you and I, Anne, were at a, a, a playhouse on March 7th, still going to the theater. You know, uh, uh, you know, we, we can we can talk we can talk about the people that we lost at the winter party, you know, which was March 4th to 10th. And now we have two mm -hmm. dead men from that and, and, and about I guess I guess about another 10 or more infected there. But that was the time when we were just shifting from, oh, my God, you know, what do we do? And here we yes, are. and how seriously should we take it? We were still asking. Anyway, I just want to say uh, that, you know, you talk about the reports that the hospital killed him. I just want to add a caveat to that. That well, uh, we'll get more into Mount Sinai when we yes. talk about the Meridans first. Okay, all Absolutely. right. Uh, but let's move on to. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my list. Uh, Lorena Borges. Yes. Uh, 59 years old, a trans activist from Jackson Heights, Queens. She was a heroine to the entire community. She had been a hardworking activist for decades, uh, a real uh, icon in the community, and she died of the virus. She was a Mexican immigrant, and uh, she started the Lorena Borjas uh, uh, Community Fund to provide financial assistance to those in crisis, including bond money for people in these ICE detention uh, centers or other detention centers. Uh, she was given the Shooting Star Award for her work with LGBT and HIV positive asylum seekers. So she was a critical part of our community, and it's so, so heartbreaking to lose her. She and of course, uh, Tuesday, yesterday was trans, international and transgender visibility day. She had been arrested and convicted a few times for sex work uh, in her earlier days in New York. And she became such a, an important community worker with the uh, trans community and others in Queens that uh, eventually, our governor, Andrew Cuomo, who everyone is so thrilled with, uh, pardoned her and relieved her of those convictions so that she could continue to do the work and could stay in the country without right. her being deported. I want to read the quote that we put on the screen with her picture, because it's from her, and it says, I don't like injustice. I saw so much injustice, like police arresting our friends, walking in the street, women that lived in our neighborhood, they were deported instantly. Nobody hears them or sees them. We are immigrants. One day I said, no, Lorena Borjas will take care of these women who don't have a voice or a vote. I have the power to rally the people. Uh, terrible loss. And what I also remember from the AIDS epidemic is how impactful each death was and what a hole it left 
in uh, the lives of those who remained. And each of these deaths is similarly uh, an enormous blow. Right. And then we lost uh, Maurice Berger. He was yeah. a professor at the Center for Art, Design, and Visual Culture, University of Maryland, Baltimore. He died at the age of 63 of this virus. He curated the exhibit on modern art and the birth of television at the Jewish Museum and others. Uh, he was cited by his colleagues for his compassion for workers, the poor, people of color, ethnic minorities, women, gay men, and lesbians. And of course, he was openly gay. Uh, and you mentioned people who had attended the winter party in Miami. Israel Carrera of North Miami, 40 years old, is the first reported death of someone who attended that party. Uh, I just, as we, just before we started, I saw there was a second death. I don't have that name. Guy was a guy named uh, Ron Rich, and he was a frequent collaborator with the task force on producing these events. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Israel Carreras, um, you know, had no known underlying health conditions. Well, we are hearing about younger, healthy people, and in fact, there was an infant who died uh, yesterday, I think, who had the virus. Yes. All right. Um, well, we want to update you on some of the people who are, who are sick with this as well. Yes, yes. We told uh, Go ahead. Uh, Tarlock Macnealis. Yes. Is that the correct pronunciation? Amazing uh, guy. A gay Irish activist, uh, currently on a respirator at last report. A uh, big bear of a man, uh, totally involved with the Irish Lesbian and Gay Organization, a native of Ireland. And when we, he was part of the protest for 25 years to get us into the St. Patrick's Day Parade. And then he became the coordinator of the unit of uh, LGBT Irish from Lavender and Green, who mm -hmm. would march in the parade. Uh, just a, a sweet guy. We send our thoughts out to his, uh, uh, his husband, Juan, and uh, hope he pulls through. Yes, exactly. You know? Uh, and then there's David Latt. We told you about him last week, the gay legal blogger, 44 years old. He had been on a respirator, but he says he's now doing worlds better than he was. He's out of the ICU. He had been unconscious, but now he's in a different ward. His condition is stable but serious. Some patients uh, get readmitted, he said. And some of, some, of, some of the patients who were let go and then readmitted well, have also died. That's what he wrote on his blog. I try to depress people, but we're learning more and more about this virus. We don't know exactly how it works. We're still at the dawn of this. Uh, I don't know if he was ever that sick, but Andy Cohen is out of the hospital and back on TV doing his Watch What Happens Live show yes. remotely with all his guests also remote on Skype or Zoom or whatever. Yep. Uh, but he's back and looking hale and hearty, and that's a good thing.